Humans are going to look drastically different in 1,000 years. Bigger, faster, stronger, maybe even a bit broken. Before we go forward to a future where humans are healthier, we need to quickly go back to the days of the Wild West. Here in 1880, your average American cowboy stands at a solid 5 feet 7 inches. Fast forward to 2023, and BAM! The North American male has shot up to an average height of 5 feet 10 inches. Why, you ask? It's all about that upgrade in general health and nutrition. It's not so much about what cowboys ate, it's what they, and the previous generations in human history, didn't eat. People in generations gone by, including those in hardy hoodlums in the Old West, had poorer nutrition, less access to food, and therefore less chance to grow big, strong, and healthy. It's not all protein shakes and chicken breasts, though. Advances in medicine and healthcare have also helped us to grow larger as a species. We got healthier, and in just over 100 years, we had the chance to grow taller, stronger, and just plain bigger. That's evolution, but at a startlingly rapid rate. So how are we going to look in 1,000 years? If you time travel to the future and you find yourself in the year 3000, average height, a whopping 6 feet 7 inches. That's one inch taller than the man himself, Michael Jordan. Play a game of pickup basketball in the year 3000 as a person of average height from today, and you aren't going to stand a chance. Not to worry though, because there does exist a future where we all have an equal shot, but more on that later. Another difference here in the year 3000 is that everyone has a similar skin tone. Racial differences blurred into oblivion over time. We all look kinda similar now where skin color is concerned, with just a hint of variation here and there. Our race was previously determined largely by geographical location. Those in warmer climates had darker skin tones to deal with the exposure to the sun. Those people living in places like Iceland, where it's cold and the need for sunglasses is not as constant, evolved to have fair skin and light hair. This helps to absorb the sun's rays. If, let's say, our world was hit by a devastating asteroid and we were plunged into an ice age, then people in the year 3000 and beyond could have fair skin due to living without substantial sunlight for hundreds of years. You see, if an asteroid were to destroy much of our planet, then smoke and ash would cover the atmosphere, creating a blanket over the Earth and blocking the sun from reaching all the survivors. After generations of living through this era of all things cold and bleak, people would evolve to grow much more hair on their bodies to better keep warm. Luckily though, our world-ending asteroid scenario involving evolution is unlikely. We'd all be lucky to survive such an asteroid in the first place. Just ask the dinosaurs. Back in our positive, prosperous year 3000, some people are looking a little strange. They have giant pupils, almost like they've been staring at a Martian sunset for centuries. Oh, right, because they have. How did we end up on Mars? Science is the simple answer. Our technologies, specifically advances in space travel, got us to a point where living on Mars became a viable option. And now, the people who made the move away from Earth have evolved to have huge pupils that let them see in the dark. Why? Well, Mars gets 66% less sunlight than Earth, so it's darker over there all year around, giving people a need to see in the dark. Larger pupils fulfill this need. By having a larger pupil, your eye says, let there be more light. Put humans on Mars for a few hundred years, and this is a change we're almost certain to see. Much like our Ice Age survivors, people on Mars would also have fairer skin tones due to being so much further away from our big orange star. Larger pupils fulfill this need. By having a larger pupil, your eye says, let there be more light. Put humans on Mars for a few hundred years, and this is a change we're almost certain to see. Much like our Ice Age survivors, people on Mars would also have fairer skin tones due to being so much further away from our big orange star. Now, let's splash into the year 5000, where climate change has turned the world into Atlantis. Iconic European cities like London and Venice? Underwater. Florida, a magical place beneath the waves. San Francisco, a bunch of islands. Climate change, once better known as global warming, caused the polar ice caps to melt. 
When the ice caps melted, the ice turned water needed somewhere to go. The sea levels rose, and all that water eventually covered many of the most iconic cities on Earth. So get this, the result of all this where we are concerned is that humans now have webbed fingers and toes. Handy adaptations for a life where swimming is as natural as walking. Not gills, though. We aren't in a 90s Kevin Costner movie or anything. Human evolution can only go so far in a few thousand years, a relatively short time in the grand scheme of evolution. Webbing of the toes and feet is actually possible so soon because some humans already possess these oddities thanks to a genetic mutation. If we had an unlimited amount of time to evolve to live in the water, then it is actually likely that we would develop gills and be able to breathe underwater. Don't hold your breath though, this would take tens of thousands of years. The single most important factor in evolution is environment. That's why predicting our evolution is so difficult. We don't know what our environment will be. What we do know is that if you put humans, or any species on Earth for that matter, they will adapt, and if they survive, they will eventually evolve to live in harmony with their environment. So we've established that we'll survive and thrive even in a world of water. But what about a world where we get it together and keep our climate in check? Well, enter the year 3023, where we've advanced to live on a highly technological, easy street. But we've also been going a bit overboard with medicine and sanitizing, so our immune systems are taking a hit. We're a bit sickly, but that's okay, because we're kept alive by futuristic medicine and tech. A rise in pandemics throughout the 1,000 years since 2023 has helped us to understand and better cure diseases. The pandemics also led to us as a species keeping everything squeaky clean though, and as a result, our immune systems have become less efficient and less equipped to deal with regular coughs and colds. We've also evolved to have permanent hunches in our necks. As the smartphone became more and more integral to our everyday lives, we evolved to the point where our necks grew stronger and more able to support our heads looking down at our latest technological devices. Speaking of tech, it's not just a part of our lives, it's part of us. Prosthetics are all the rage. We're talking brain implants that boost learning, communication, and even our senses. We now have chips inside our brains that instantly translate languages, do mathematical calculations, or even teach us how to cook that restaurant quality dinner we've always wanted to make. Who needs those larger Martian pupils when we can see whatever we need with a remarkable implant inside the eye? No need to be naturally athletic either. Prosthetics have turned us into superhumans, jumping higher and sprinting faster than ever before. Six foot seven inches may be the average height here in the future, but on a basketball court, prosthetics even the odds and give everyone a chance to dominate. It's safe to say that humans in 3023 are living the dream, even if their immune systems aren't quite as tough as those in years past. So, evolution. In the end, it's not just about growing taller or adapting to new environments. What our future is really going to see us do is merge with technology. And in this crazy journey through time, one thing's clear. If we can dodge asteroids and keep climate change at bay, then our biggest challenge as a species is most likely just keeping up with the technology. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed learning about how we might look in the future, be sure to give us a like, subscribe to our channel, and hit that notification bell. To see how our planet is set to change in the future, check out this video about Earth in the next 100 years.